killer whale. From the earliest times a much misunderstood creature, it was named Orca, the devil of the sea, by the ancient Romans. In the 19th century, a Danish zoologist reported finding the remains of 13 dolphins and 14 seals in the stomach of one specimen. The orca lives in a pond and preys on other whales, dolphins, seals and otters, even sharks. In the hierarchy of marine life, the orca is king, the strongest hunter in the ocean. Little wonder that for centuries, man has lived in fear of him. For the past 15 years, however, researchers in Canada have been studying the behavior and ecology of the orca. Their findings demonstrate an extraordinary level of intelligence and sensitivity far removed from its demonic reputation. Vancouver in July. Hiroya Minakuchi is an underwater cameraman and scientific journalist who for five years has been studying the orcas of Johnston Strait. <laughs> Dr. John Ford, an authority on whale vocalization, conducts research at the Vancouver Public Aquarium. And then the next one is uh, J-Pod. underwater recordings of each group doing different behaviors, find out if perhaps there are differences in the sounds of different groups. And so uh, it turned out that, in fact, each pod has a slightly different dialect. So it's really unusual. Killer whales seem to be the only mammal that has a dialect system like this. Oh, okay, let's see now. You like this one? Favorite? From his laboratory, Dr. Ford can observe the killer whales constantly. This one enjoys yeah, looking at pictures one. of others of the same species. Oh. It shows no interest at all in pictures of other animals. This interest in visual images, coupled with the fact that the pods have their own dialect, suggests that the killer whale is a highly intelligent mammal. So how does this intelligence manifest itself in the wild? Johnston Strait lies between Vancouver Island and the North American continent. It's dotted by numerous small islands formed by the erosion of the continental glaciers. It's on one of these, Craycroft Island, that Hiroya plans to spend the next three months at a camp in Boat Bay. This has been his routine for the last five years. July to September are spent here steeped in the study of killer whales. His interest began at university where he majored in marine biology. Since then, he's traveled the world photographing whales. But Johnston Strait has proved the richest location of all. This is a hydrophone. Since sound travels through water better than through air, the mic can pick up noises made by the whales from several kilometers away, assuming there are no obstacles in the path. Still, the whales are not easy to spot. Johnston Strait is 100 kilometers long and 3 kilometers wide. It's an important passage for sea traffic between Seattle and Alaska, with large passenger vessels and barges constantly toing and fro. But there is a sanctuary for the mammals, the Robson Bight Ecological Reserve, where strict regulations are in force.
The telltale sign that the whales are around, the spout of water from their blowholes. The rule when approaching the Orca is to keep engine noise as low as possible and never to cross their path. They're easily spotted by their dorsal fins, first identified by scientific photographers in 1973. On an adult male, the dorsal fin can be as much as two meters in height. The fin of the female is somewhat smaller and looks rather like that of a dolphin. Jeff Jacobson has been taking pictures of killer whales for over 10 years. Not surprisingly, he and Hiroya have become good friends. Research has shown that the orca family swims, hunts and rests together. This group is called a pod, and it is maternally centered. Each pod has its own dialogue. In the past 12 years, 263 killer whales have been caught. The state government of British Columbia banned catches in 1976. Under such protection, the number of whales here has increased to some 170, forming 16 pods. This flock of seagulls appears to be attacking something in the sea. It turns out to be a shoal of baby herring, thrown into panic by attacks from the birds above and from the salmon in the sea beneath them. Sharks are also attracted by the scent of blood. swallowing up vast numbers of the herring. In summer, Johnston Strait is a favorite place for the salmon to spawn. The eggs make a tasty addition to the killer whale's menu. Hiroya has developed a new type of camera that will allow him to follow the whales as they hunt. The orca hunt in a team. Cleverly, they chase their prey towards the shore. Hiroya waits for his chance to drop his camera into the water. emits echolocation pulses to detect the salmon which is hiding in a crevice in the rocks.
The round head appears to act as a kind of sonic lens, focusing the pulses into a beam. minutes the whale pursued the salmon and then it gave up. <laughs> Not so Hiroya, however. The big king salmon is still in hiding, smarting from the injury it received from the orca. Finally, Jeff caught it. No need to worry about what's for dinner in camp tonight. Chief marks. <laughs> The killer whales were keen to attack the salmon, but what about people? Hiroya and Jeff decided to make a dive to see what the reaction would be. The summer sun has resulted in large-scale propagation of plankton, Visibility is poor underwater. To take pictures, they must approach within two meters of the whales. A pod approaches rapidly. The whales are clearly curious. The female leader swims between the two men, no doubt to observe what they're up to. Man and beast are barely one meter apart. It's clear that Hiroya is tense. The whale appears to study the camera before moving off. Hiroya was later to remark that she'd no doubt recognize him again. The experiment seems to bear out the theory that the orca might not be such killer whales after all. Instead, they appear to be wise and gentle. they seem to trust the people in the strait too. When the tourist boats pass, they seem eager to put on a show of breaching. This summer retreat is more than a chance to study the whales. It's a welcome respite from the pressures of Tokyo. Here, he's in touch with wildlife, the forests and the sea. In August, news came of a super pod. 
This is a phenomenon that occurs only once or twice a year. A number of pods come together and mingle. For what purpose, we still don't know. The whales slap the ocean surface with their fins as if in a display of high spirits. One of the males leaves his pod to approach another. It's almost as if they've been looking forward to this day. Could it perhaps be a day of reunion? Or is it some kind of marine mammal festival? Madness, madness is happening today. This is not as mad as it could be, superpod-wise. We have three dialects here. An adult killer whale weighs more than five tons, yet it can leap out of the water with apparent ease. Perhaps this breaching action is a form of recognition among friends. <laughs> On Super Pod Day, the killer whales appear to overcome the differences in dialect between the pods. Body language seems to say it all. As September comes, the Johnston Strait becomes colder and the day is increasingly rainy. But Hiroya has one more important task ahead of him. He wants to record a ritual that the whales undertake at Rubbing Beach. He'll use a remote controlled underwater video camera. When the checks on it are completed, he waits for better weather. The images that Hiroya is out to capture will be the culmination of his five years' observation of the Orca. The Robson Bight Reserve is strictly out of bounds to all but the whales. Here, there's a secret beach where they act out an odd ritual. Hiroya has applied for permission to record it. Before the whales arrive, he sets up his equipment. His forecast of the course the whales will take is based on five years of observation. Is there anywhere he's found uh, Vancouver Island shore? Uh, right now, uh, the E-30s are westbound off Sophia's, and the C-5s are at the eastern end of of the bite, the Robson bite, and they're still eastbound, so they might come over to the beaches. Okay, thank you very much. At first, it appears his calculations have gone adrift. He's forced to wait for a week in the increasingly cold fog. His permitted time is running out. Suddenly, he spots something on the horizon. The whales are arriving. Now, he can only hope and pray that everything will go to plan, that the whales will behave as expected, and that the camera will be working properly. The killer whales approach the shallows and begin to dive. Uh. 
they deliberately rub themselves against the round pebbles on the beach. At one time, five whales are repeating the rubbing action, apparently oblivious to anything else. No one has yet explained this ritual. Some say it's a way the whales have of shedding dead surface tissue. But if that is all it is, why do they confine it to this beach? Whatever the reason, the whales appear to find pleasure in their action, and their ecstasy below is reflected on the surface. Perhaps it has something to do with the particular conditions on this beach, the smooth pebbles or something of that kind, but the answer remains a mystery. Whales continued to behave like this for an hour. Throughout, Hiroya was glued to his video monitor, absorbed in an extraordinary drama. Today, another drama, that of a birth. First time. Today is the first time anybody has identified this calf. And so, this is A53 today. Brand new calf. Congratulations. Congratulations, thank you. This calf was not the only one born this year in this sanctuary for the killer whales. Our cameras were able to record the calf suckling as it swam alongside its mother. The rest of the family appeared to hover around as if protecting the newborn. This calf will learn the techniques of survival from its mother and the others in its pond. With luck, it can look forward to 50 or 60 years of life.
we could eavesdrop. Who knows what we might learn from Orca, the gentle giant of the sea.